Hello everyone and welcome to Paper Craft Create. It's Anna here. Thank you so much for joining our KCC12 Poker Doodles collaboration hop featuring super sponsor Poker Doodles. Our team will be showcasing some of their amazing digital papers and stamps with Kendra's Card Challenge 12 card sketches. So this is also a giveaway hop. So just to let you know, if you get through all the videos and then you can fill out a Google form, which will be in the description box below by the 18th of November, you'll be in the running to win a digital prize from Kendra herself. Now today I will be looking at card sketch number 10 and I'll be doing a little bit of a trick with this card. I will in fact be turning it into an interactive card. Um, I'm going to say it's going to be an easel card of sorts, um, just a little bit different to some of the traditional easel cards you've seen. Um, this is not my original design and I have mishmashed a couple of different ones that I have seen. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and will um, enjoy the way I've you know changed up this um, card sketch um, to give it a little bit more of a um, interactive feel. Now the products I'll be using today are some of Poker Doodles digital products. I really love their digital products. They are such wonderful quality um, and so easy to use. Uh, so the uh, image I'll be using or the papers I'll be using are part of their Berry Christmas range that was released uh, not, not that long ago for this Christmas. Um, and then I will also be using one of the um, uh, images, which is the reindeer dress up Bella Christmas bear, which is just absolutely gorgeous. Now you can get this pre-coloured, which I can, I've used some of their pre-coloured images, which are really fantastic, quick and easy to make. And then of course, um, they do have the ones that you can colour in. And today I've decided that I will actually colour in my image. So without further ado, I will get through and uh, show you how I put this card together. Okay, so just so you have a little understanding of what I'll be doing with this card. So I'll be changing it up a little bit, of course, as I said, it'll be an interactive card. Um, so I'll show you what I'll be doing with this. I will be making a two piece card that will, whoops, I'll get all my bits and pieces. So in fact, I'll be using this piece here of the pattern paper it will in fact be a quarter of an inch shorter and I will put a PDF um, like a link to a PDF which you will be able to download with all the measurements for this card so don't get too caught up in what measurements you need I'll have something which you can uh, download and print off or just uh, save to your computer um, so it will be this front panel which will be um, representing this pattern paper so it is in fact slightly wider and also um, uh, just um, a little bit shorter as well um, and then for the um, banner piece here I'm in fact going to use that as my focal point and it will be a little bit bigger so this is just showing you how you can use these card sketches of course once the um, the um, challenge is over or even you know within the challenge it is all about using you know different bits but because obviously I've used different shapes and so on it might not be um, you know it won't work out with the bits that you do cut up so I'll pop that one aside and I'll get starting in this um, uh, card and I'll just run through all my bits and pieces here. So I just wrote a few little notes for myself so that I could uh, work out what it is I'm doing. So first of all what you're going to do is you're going to cut down a piece which will be your uh, card base and that will be 11 by 4 and a quarter. And then you will score at two and three quarters and five and a half. Then you'll be, you, you sort of will just fold and score that and then you will fold and score that. So it'll be a valley fold with a mountain fold on top. And then there will be a second piece. And that one there will be 10 inches by three and three quarters. Now you can make this whatever size you want. This is what I just decided to go with. Um, but you know, you could alter it to best suit yourself. Uh, now with that, so ideally the only bits of pattern paper you would ideally need is this one here, which I have just extended out just because I want to um, just cover it fully. Um, but this would be that smaller piece there. Um, however, because of this card and it's got so much um, on it, I have in fact uh, cut it out a little bit more of this one here. So 
this is four and a quarter by it's two and um three quarters but it's just ever so slightly cut shorter just so that it doesn't go over those folds and that'll be flush on top of that um, and then you'll do a second one there and then of course you'll also have this piece here which is your basic card front size which will be the um, four and a quarter by five and a half with just a hair sort of snipped off just so that you just want to leave a little bit there so it doesn't come over your folds so that's those three pieces and then this other piece i've just made a layer um, you could leave this plain but i'm actually just using up a bunch of um, the pattern papers they were just so gorgeous i had to in fact use more than just one <laughs> and getting my money's worth out of um, obviously being able to print off as many as i want uh, because i obviously have bought the files and uh, or, sorry i was given these but you know i've got the files and i can in fact um, print off as many as i want which is the great thing about digital uh, products so i'll get putting this together Okay, so what we have here are the two pieces so you'll see that this just looks like it's fully covered you could in fact probably just use a um, pattern paper but because I'm wanting to sort of you know highlight that bit from the card sketch and show you how you can turn it into something else um, that's why I've done this and you'll just see that I haven't covered those creases there because then it will just cause problems um, you could mat this if you wanted to leave a border around it but I felt that I, I liked it to be fully covered so this little piece here um, will in fact sit in here shortly and um, then it will sit and I'll show you how that all works together so just a couple of things so this is my gorgeous little um, image that I have colored in he's so cute <laughs> so I've just used some Copic colors once again I'll leave the colors that I've used um, I just thought I didn't want to make this too lengthy a video um, so I have done it off screen um, and instead of using that small um, where do I have that the small banner there to incorporate that into this card sketch I have in fact I'm using three banners to use as a little highlight piece on the front there so I might in fact um, I think I will put this down first otherwise it might get a bit bulky so basically you'll have sort of like the two little cards I'll just put that together now what I'm wanting to do you can do this however you want but I'm actually going to center this here and I think that will sort of look nice it'll give us a, a nice border um, I just love these papers together they're quite striking and bold but oh, I think they'll just look gorgeous together so the idea is what's going to happen is we're going to put like a little stopper here as you would with an easel card or you know uh, you know a traditional sort of more traditional easel card um, so what we'll have to do is we'll just have to judge where that'll be so that will in fact fold flat over the top so you can post still post this which is great um, so what I'll do is I'll put this one together first and I think I will just put these flush on top of each other and then I will in fact just use some foam tape for my little gorgeous reindeer he's just the cutest <laughs> um, okay so I'll just center this excellent and then I'll just pop that one there on top as well so I've just um, used some colored cardstock to coordinate back with these papers just to add a little bit of highlight but have kept it quite white as well just with my card base so you could use colored colored cardstock if you wanted 
um, that's totally up to you so I'll use some foam tape to stick him actually I might put that on there first actually just give me a minute get him on some foam card sorry on some foam here okay so I will put him not quite center because I just want him to not be covered up by that little bit there so a little bit further towards the top I'll put this focal point put that on now because with the foam tape it might make it a bit tricky to add on later otherwise you could probably use some glue um, wet glue I'll just center that in the middle but towards the top there we go and now I can I'll be able to put him on once I've centered oh that's so cute <laughs> um, now this is the bit that's going to make this all interactive and work well <laughs> so what I'll do is I will in fact put those two oh, okay so I'm going to layer this up a little bit I'm not going to put it on to oh, just use some card stock here I think I'm just going to lift this ever so slightly so rather than having too much foam because that'll already be a bit bulky I will where's my glue I will put these two together it'll just raise the this a little bit higher now let's So sometimes if you want a bit of dimension instead of um, you know using foam tape which can be quite thick particularly if you can do a couple layers of it you can always just layer up a few bits of cardstock and that will you know give you the illusion of a little bit of dimension without being super thick and also a bonus fantastic way to use up some of those scrap cardstock pieces so I will now center that on this other bit of card stock oh this other bit of patterned paper now I'm just going to okay I'll just center this now this is the bit that's going to make or break this card so I want to put this on a little bit of foam so it acts as a stopper so that will keep this open so what I will do is I'm going to put some foam towards the bottom of this I'll put some here and then I might get a little bit more I'll just put it above there but we don't I mean you could you just want to make it measure you just want your foam to be the thing to stop the card from collapsing and it sort of keeps it upright now I've only just printed this paper onto uh, uh, just like a thicker version of a copy paper but it wouldn't be much more than a 90 GSM you may even want to either print it on some thicker paper for this section or because I've got it doubled up it probably doesn't matter too much um, but on its own it probably would be just a little too light So sorry I'll just get that off okay so maybe that's a bit okay so if I if that closes that'll sit on the top but ideally we want to hopefully this will work <laughs> let's give it a go and see see what comes of it okay so that is super cute so it's sort of uh lower than sort of centered in the middle this way but sort of centered that way and then that should just stick there should bring the operative word it might need to be just a little bit lower actually or what i might need to do is just take this um top bit of 
I do hate to do that. I might just move this down a little bit lower. Oops. Let me just... Okay, there we go. go that's going to stay just nicely perfect great so I will now attach my little bear oh should my brain be it reindeer bear <laughs> he's just so cute oh the images to this um collection are just gorgeous so I will have of course links to where you can purchase all of that uh, however, if you do put in a set of cards, the wonderful Poker Doodles do offer um, some prizes. Um, and that's worked out really well. So you can see sort of by the top of that, that stays nicely. So there's the finished card. Absolutely just gorgeous. <laughs> um, now with this card, obviously, you know, the recipient can stand it up and it will fold flat. Um, there's a little bit of bulk there, but not too much. Um, but you need that double-sided tape in that to obviously cause this, uh, have a stop. Um, you could probably layer up a bit, a few pieces of cardboard, which aren't quite as thick as foam tape, if you wanted to underneath that, just to, you've just got to somehow or other create a stopper. The foam tape is definitely probably the best option. So just inside, you'll have a lot of space here to write your message. Um, and the other thing I thought of, and this is a bit of an afterthought, and I thought, oh, this is a great little spot to put a gift card. So what I would do is, um, I mean, you could put a pocket in if you wanted to. The only problem is it might fall out, just it might fall, you know, because um, it'll be sort of facing down. What you might like to do is just get some of those glue dots. You'd put a couple there and you just stick that on there. And that, in fact, would just keep it um, together. But that would be a, an awesome little um, gift card holder, uh, cum card. So that's, whoop, that's it there. So thank you so much for watching. Now I hope that you'll get around to all of the um, other design team members in this hop. We will all be using um, a few different products um, in a couple of the same um, of the Poker Doodles collection, uh, all digitals and um, you know creating different card sketches. As I said, I like to um, you know sometimes turn these in and if you've watched a few of my videos I have turned some of these card sketches into you know an interactive style of card so you know we urge you to firstly watch this hop have a look at all the different design uh, inspiration with some poker doodles product and also we'd love for you to give the actual challenge itself a go so all information on how to enter links and all that sort of stuff will be in the description box. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.